Hi, I'm Cody Mack with Kalefi North America. This is a product training video on our 535 HA series pressure reducing valve. Be sure to check out our installation tip video too. The 535 HA is a valve that reduces water pressure from a supply line down to a pressure that is suitable for the fixtures in a building. The valve is designed for plumbing applications, so it is made of low lead brass to comply with the low lead law, and it meets all codes and approval requirements for plumbing applications in North America, including ASSC 1003. NSF 372, NSF 61, IPC, and UPC. Let's start by talking about some of the important features of the 535HA. On the top of the valve, you're going to notice your adjustment dial. You'll see these plus and minus symbols. Turning in the plus direction will raise the outlet pressure setting, minus will lower it. Below the adjustment dial, you'll notice these two openings, one on either side. This is going to show you your set pressure of the valve. The scale goes from 15 to 90 PSI, and the valve comes factory set at 45. The great thing about having the window on either side is it allows you to see the set pressure no matter which way the valve is facing. You will also notice that when you turn the adjustment dial on the pressure reducing valve that the scale might not move, but as you do turn it one full rotation, you'll hear it click. Now one thing to remember is that as you are turning the adjustment dial, you are continuously adjusting the pressure. It's only the scale indicator that is incrementing. Before we get too far, I do want to mention that on the top, but in the middle of the adjustment dial, you'll notice that there is a screw. This allows you to tighten that screw, and this will lock the dial in place to minimize tampering. The 535HA has a downstream pressure gauge option. This quarter inch female NPT connection is where the pressure gauge is attached or you could connect a pressure transducer if you want to tie into a building automation system. The valve body also has dual union connections, one on either side for ease of installation and service. We also offer a good selection of tailpieces. You'll notice that on this guy here we have female NPT, but we also offer sweat, press, and PEX connections. The valve is a very high quality product. The body is going to be made out of eco brass. This is a low lead DZR alloy that resists corrosion by hard water, chlorine, and oxygen. The internal moving parts are made out of stainless steel and a very durable low friction plastic material that resists the formation of lime scale, which is a common cause for PRV performance issues. The valve has pressure balanced seats for excellent stability and accuracy. It also has very high flow rates and very low pressure drops, which means it will maintain good downstream pressure and flow even when there is a large number of fixtures open. The materials used in the valve also allow it to be used in hot water systems up to 180 degrees. This means it can be used in high-rise buildings for hot water risers. It is also rated up to 300 PSI for high pressure systems, but one of the best features about the 535HA is the fully replaceable cartridge. The materials used in the valve also allow it to be used in hot water circuits up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This means it can be used in high-rise buildings where you need a pressure reducing valve on those hot water risers. It is also rated up to 300 PSI for high pressure systems. But one of the best features about the 535HA is going to be the fully replaceable cartridge. As you can see here, the cartridge removes pretty easily from the brass body. This allows you to open it up for inspection or cleaning or even replacement if need be. So then you can take that guy right out and pop in a new one real easy. Okay, now let's talk about how it works. Like I said previously, a PRV reduces pressure. It does this by using a combination of a diaphragm, a shuttle, and a spring inside the valve. You can see here that the upstream pressure is 80 PSI, while the downstream pressure is 30. When no water is being drawn off, the pressures will stay like this. It's what we refer to as a static condition. When the downstream fixture is open, however, the downstream pressure will drop because there is flow through the valve. All PRVs do this. The more flow, the greater the pressure drop across the PRV. This is known in the industry as fall-off pressure. For example, a PRV set at 30 PSI static will drop to 28 or 27 PSI actual outlet pressure when there are two or three GPM flowing through it. At high flow rates, the falloff pressure can be significant, and this is important to, to consider when you're sizing the PRV. So how do you size a PRV? We at Kalefi, we try to make this very easy. The first step is to select the valve size based on the target pipe velocity. Typically, you're gonna be looking between three to six feet per second. Let's say, for example, you have added up all your fixtures in your plumbing circuit where you want to locate the valve, and the total is 8 GPM. Using our chart, you're going to draw a vertical line up from 8 gallons per minute until you get to the target velocity, which is going to be that blue band. In this example, the 3 quarter inch valve is going to be the obvious choice. At 8 gallons per minute, you'll have a velocity of almost 4 feet per second. 
Step two is to determine the fall off pressure across the valve at that flow. So starting from the eight GPM horizontal axis, again, go up the three quarter inch valve curve and across to the Y axis to read the fall off. In this example, the fall off would be about 7.3 PSI at eight GPM. So you would need to make sure that your PRV set point minus 7.3 PSI would maintain enough pressure for your fixtures during a maximum flow condition. All that being said, we have this quick selection table that's available on our technical brochure that's online. It goes over the recommended flow ranges for each size, so sizing a 535HA is really easy. Now regarding installation, the 535HA can be installed in any orientation in a horizontal or vertical pipe. Just make sure that it's not upside down. You want to minimize the possibility of dirt and sediment settling in the internal working components. This PRV should also not be installed outdoors or exposed to freezing temperatures without protection from the elements. Another thing to consider is water hammer. It can cause premature failure of PRVs. If there is a risk for water hammer in the system, for example washing machines, dishwashers, things of that nature with quick acting solenoids, we recommend installing water hammer arresters. A nice accessory that can be ordered separately for our PRVs is what's referred to as a jumper nipple. The jumper nipple is temporarily installed in place of the PRV valve body, typically during installation or while the system is being flushed and cleaned prior to commissioning. This jumper nipple is going to have the same lay length and connect right up to the unions that we provide. Now let's talk about troubleshooting after the installation. If you have a, a water heater downstream of the pressure reducing valve, your pressure may increase above the setting of the PRV. If you have a gauge on your PRV, it will show that. And at this point, we would recommend installing an expansion tank in your plumbing system to absorb that increased pressure caused by the expansion of the hot water. If the PRV is not maintaining pressure and you find that the downstream pressure is creeping up, the likely culprit is going to be dirt and debris in the valve seat area, which is allowing flow to pass through the seat. At this point, you're going to want to remove the cartridge to inspect and clean it. What you're going to find once you open it up, there's going to be a screen. This screen is going to be on the inlet side of the cartridge assembly. You'll find that that'll typically get debris in it, so you can remove that and clean it. After that, at the very bottom of the assembly, you're going to find where the shuttle meets the, the seat at the bottom. If there's debris in there, you can clean that right out. Now, if that doesn't solve your problem, you're going to need to replace the cartridge assembly. I want to thank you for taking the time to learn more about our pressure reducing valves. If you have any further questions, please contact your wholesaler, your rep, or us directly, and thanks for watching.